Winston Goodfellow here, and I'm with Craig Jackson at the 50th anniversary of his marvelous show. For those of you that have not been, it's highly recommended at least once, but a lot more times. <laughs> and so, Craig, here we are at year 50, and we were just talking about, Craig and I have a running joke about how the auction business has been very, very good to him. And so, Craig, how's this year going? It's phenomenal. Uh, you know, we're just at the start, but automobile, as of this morning, we had already sold $2.4 million worth of automobilia. Holy Toledo. Starting off yesterday morning, you know, at before nine o'clock in the morning, we sold a Greyhound bus sign for $150,000, uh, a Globe for $58,000. Cars yesterday were very strong. Gate is strong, so all metrics, uh, people are ready to get back out and they're spending money. You know, I think we have two things going for us. One, I think everybody realizes we're not going to live forever and your cash is depreciating in the bank, so I might as well go buy Bingo a hard notice. asset. Yep. There you go. That's notice. it. That's <laughs> it. Every time there's inflation, everybody runs to real estate and cars. Hard assets. Hard assets. And so that you're really thinking that now inflation's starting to kick in. Um, that's really going to give us a bit of a goose. On the, I think, uh, across the board, and I, we saw a lot of resto mods, and I think those are two things. When you're buying up one that already somebody's already spent seven, eight hundred thousand building, and you can buy it for less than that because the prices of building them is going up. Evidently, yes. I did not realize it shot up that high. Yes, and uh, you know we have some here that were million dollar builds. Yikes, that's a Pebble Beach winning restoration. Yep, well, come look at some of these. I'll show you. Shall we? Yes. Yep. All right, done. Um, so your dad and Tom Barrett started this 50 yeah. years ago. Yes. But it originally started as a car show, if I'm remembering correctly. It did, the Fiesta de los Autos Elegantes, which we have a huge banner. I reprinted the poster in a huge banner. Around the site, you'll see all these historical photos of the early days. I did a video for the gala where I ran from 67 to now. Nice. And uh, it's a nice clip. It's only four minutes long. I tried to keep it short, but there's so much great history at Barrett Jackson. And it all started as a charity car show. Charity is still a big part of Barrett Jackson. And it seems like good deeds lead to good opportunities. <laughs> Spoken like what did you call yourself? I'm just a used car dealer. I'm salesman. just a humble used car dealer, you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so, so your dad and Tom started with a charitable vision. Then they move it over to the auction. Yes. What, what, was, uh, what was behind that? Well, as we say, Tom Barrett was having a change in his domestic relations. And, uh, oh, now I remember that story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, he was selling his cars and uh, you know, they, they went to Auburn, saw what Dean Cruz had done there, had Dean come out, conduct the auction. 50 cars from uh, Tom, 18 from my dad. That was the nucleus. Some of the other members of the Classic Car Club of Arizona put in some cars. So it was about 80 cars at the first auction. Bob Pass was upstairs last night. We were reminiscing. He goes, I'm probably one of the only guys here that remembers Bruce Meyer was up there. He goes, I've been here since the second one when I saw, you know, the feature car, which I won't go into, sell for world record prices, but it was the parade car of the Fuhrer. He, now, Tom well, didn't just collect that. Yes, he collected the, all the World the, War II leaders' cars. The 770K. Cars, the yeah, 770K. Yeah. Old Mercedes. Yep, yep. And, uh, you know, back then we were selling all pre-war classics. That's, you know, it was people from the Classic Car Club of America, brass cars. Uh, it's evolved over time yes. with the auction. And so then, did your dad pass it to Brian, your older brother, before he passed away, or? Well, we both grew up in it. So I think, you know, I didn't really enjoy it growing up, being the youngest brother. So I got every crappy job there was, literally, uh, from running the trash crew at the first auction to running the drivers. Then I got into the logistics. And my dad did the logistics. My mom ran the office. And Tom's job was 
go get all the world's greatest cars and bring them to the auction. That was the partnership. And then I took over more from my brother as he took over more from my father. And I just did every job in the thing, including when we even came out to Westworld. I was still the guy that designed how all these tents would tie together and how we, and I went to the tent company with some of the stuff. They thought it was absolutely nuts. And I gave them the math and they go, yeah, I guess it'll work. And, <laughs> That's and then, it. Yeah, and then how far is this? So from the front entrance to the end of this tent is eight tenths of a mile. And this, this tent in itself is a Guinness Book of World Records for the largest freestanding structure on the planet of temporary. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so then Brian starts running it. Did he have this vision of where things have gone? Or is well, that Brian kind of and I both told Tom and my dad that we got to start putting muscle cars in, which they thought was sacrilege and 50 sports cars. Barrett embraced that. We ran a GTO Ferrari over the block, which is great video. I can't say Tom's comments, but uh, <laughs> it was colorful. Oh, uh, what a surprise. Because it came up, uh, you know, it was good money for the time. And he said, you know, the, the buyer and the seller, there's two fools meeting. <laughs> <laughs> which is just what you want to hear in the middle of an auction. Yes, yeah, very the one that made the offer and the one that turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can't true. make up some of his comments. Oh, but God, isn't that the truth? He was uh, way colorful. ahead of his colorful. Yeah. He'd have made great reality TV. People would have oh thought all God. his stuff was scripted, but it wasn't. He was, uh, he was a character, but he had 10,000 cars go through his hands in his lifetime. Every day before noon, he wanted to buy and sell a car. That was his goal. Then he'd go Toledo. do his other activities. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you do the transition going from pre-war to post-war, muscle cars to sports cars. But as I always like to say, this is, in a way, it's not an auction. It's a very high-end state fair at which cars happen to be sold using the auction method. So Brian was the first one that brought in Chrysler the, day be the year before he passed. Chrysler came in, in 90 for the 95 auction in January. and. He envisioned growing it. I took over, you know, it was an emotional thing. I didn't talk I about it during the gala, but three days before he died, he was still loose and I was out sitting around his pool and uh, had to have him sign a will. I had to have all that drafted. He hadn't thought of any of that, wow. nor did he want to think about it. Of he course. thought He thought he was gonna make it and I told him, I don't wanna tell you this brother, but. You look like hell. So just sign this thing, and he didn't want to sign it. I go, well, otherwise your ex-wife's going to get everything. And I think reality hit him. So he signed the will, and I go, what else should I know? And he goes, you've always known what to do. But to have your older brother who always told you, ah, you don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Ah, you don't know what you're talking about. So he just said, go with your gut. And I went with my gut, but I also sent out a questionnaire to all my customers, and I sat and read every one of them. What should I do? Well, I've been giving free entry fees and no commissions. I listened to everything else. <laughs> and, you know, and part of it, I went to the city and said I need improvements, but they wanted to do more during the time they were here than just sit in there and watch an auction. You know, part of it was improvements, bathrooms, pavement, you know, all those things I went to the city about. But I really focused on turning this into a lifestyle event and uh, making it all inclusive, not just for men to come here and buy a car and leave, the wives. I added fashion shows uh, with Rob Report. I brought in more lifestyle and uh, really stepped up the party and made it so that you could come here whether you are here to buy a car or whether you're not successful. The other thing people said is they don't want to come here and just appraise cars that aren't for sale. They want to know if they fly yes. here, the cars are for sale. Yes. So the year before my brother passed, we sold 800, we had 850 cars, but we only had about a 50% sale. I took over, we only had 580 cars, but we had an 80% sale. So I actually sold more cars and made more money because yes. I didn't cut any deals, yes. which did not make me a popular guy with a lot of the dealers that were used to doing what they wanted. Remember Mr. Skeptical? Yes, and part of it is I put transparency in. I said, yes. whatever happens, happens. Good, bad, or ugly. 
Uh, let's just deal with it. The other thing I really felt strong about, and Steve Davis came in and helped me do the arbitrations. As I said, my brother gave me all the jobs. He hated, he was a wonderful man, but a B-type personality. So he didn't like confrontation. So whenever there's confrontation, go and talk to this guy. <laughs> So I had Steve, and he's got a great demeanor with people. First yes. five years, Steve handled that. At the same time, he was selling 40 cars at the auction, no reserve. So he was pretty busy. And I really wanted to make everybody know, if they came here, what the car is represented is what the car is, and that it's for sale. And that evolved into 2005, us ending up all no reserve. Every car here, 1,850 some, Every car is no reserve, so. So you're not doing any salon cars this year where the higher Market's so hot, I didn't need to, you know, and there were deals offered to me, but you know, they're so used to getting, uh, going back to the old days, deals. And I'm like, no, yes. the deal is the deal. Uh, I'm not gonna guarantee you. I'm not going to tell you, I'm gonna give you eight million up front for your yes. goal wing. Uh, you're gonna put it in, the market's gonna tell us what it's worth. We ended up with a fabulous selection of cars, Carrera GT, 918 P1, last Senna ever built. It's quite an assortment of cars. That's too funny you mentioning deals and we'll guarantee a car and that type of stuff as auction companies are apt to do behind closed doors because I was talking with someone yesterday where another auction company was trying to do exactly that. So, I don't do it. Yeah. What you see, and it's got to be the same deal for everybody because everybody talks. Yes. And, oh, I got this and I got that. It's, it's an even playing field here. Yes. Whether you're selling, whether you're buying, everybody pays the same thing. So, shall we go out and look at some cars? Sure. I mean, that's the foundation of how we got here. Awesome. Now, let's look at how the cars have changed. But before we do that, I've got a little 50th anniversary present for you. So, last year, Craig and I did a photo shoot of some cars of his. That's fantastic. So a little red, the 66 uh, GT 350, four speed convertible, one of two, the only red one, the green Hornet, and my triple crown winning 65 Shelby. But then you had one other one in there too. My new one, my uh, 2020, Shelby, same VIN number as that car, Ford made it for me. So, very but, cool. But there was one problem during the photo shoot, which was, there was some guy that kept jumping in the picture. Yeah! And I'm going. And I also brought the snake out. Yeah, and it's just like, sir, you, you know, you act like you own the cars. What are you doing there? You're interrupting <laughs> our photo shoot. So anyhow, bud. Oh, this would be great for the man cave. Perfect. These are all for you. Thank you very much, Winston. So, yeah, this that's was a an piece of awesome art. Thing. Yeah, this was uh, this was a lot of fun. I still want to drive the convertible. All right, it yeah. gets driven. I None of my a... cars are trailer queens. Trust yeah, that's me. That's no joke. At the entry. Do you have one of these? Yes. What do you think? I love it. Do you? How does it compare to the previous generation on the road? Well, you don't hit your skull with the door, so <laughs> that's a big. First day I got the car, everybody told me, watch out for the door, it's a killer. So the first thing you do, you take it out, you drive it, you have fun, you fling the door open, you go to get up, the springs bounce it, the hinges go like that, comes back, hits you in the forehead, knocks you back down in the seat, and you see stars for about two minutes. You go and you got a line right across your forehead. That's what they're talking about. <laughs> These flip up, the way they cut the doors out are much easier to get into because yeah, so it's a butterfly door. They, they cut into it here, so you don't have to step over yes. like a lot of cars. I get in, I just sit down, flip my feet in and get in it, don't hit the door. But it's all carbon fiber, the entire yeah, car. Yeah, this, this is a pretty impressive presentation. Now, you wanna see, I, when I ordered mine, mine is the last 17 built, painted black with red stripes, like uh, the Barrett Jackson Shelby's. Yes. So I asked them, can I get it and re do carbon polished stripes? Oh, that's gonna be hard. We well, they figured it out, because I said, do you like Bugatti? Just line yes. up all the... Yeah, Pagani the, does the Pagani same Pagani thing. Pagani does the same thing. Where you have the herringbone pattern. And look at the herringbone coming together yes, in the front, it? Oh, and it awesome. comes together in the back. Yeah. So, you know, 
they figured it out. This is a carbon edition, a 2020. It just came off the two-year embargo last week. So this uh, will be one of, it'll be the first 2020 we've sold. So we have a, a 17 heritage, mm -hmm. which is right the, here. and a 19 yep. heritage, yep. And, a, and a carbon. But when you look down this row, this is supercar raw. Oh. So you have a Carrera GT, which these things have doubled in the past year in value. And it's so funny because they had a hard time giving them away when they came out. You know, and after Paul Walker's, you know, a lot of people are very apprehensive, but that car had original tires on it, hard as a rock. Got to change tires. And you got to know, it's a Porsche. They all want to rotate if you don't drive them right. But boy, when you drive them right, when you it's drive a them right, piece. Three pedals. Yes. I love a, a real and stick the shift. And that V10. And the V10, they are marvelous cars. You just got to know how to drive. Yes. A 918 next to it, 400 miles on this 918. So between the 918 and the, and the Carrera GT, which would you take? You know, I would probably take that and this. Uh, <laughs> yes. Full disclosure, I have owned this at one time. It's a wonderful car. Uh, so this particular car, or just... It's all sorted out now. I was just about to ask you, are you going to bid on this? Maybe. Gonna, yeah. Okay, and if so I do it, I get... going to bid on it. I always get off the block if I'm going to bid on it. Um, That's right. But There's the story when RM sold it wasn't accurate, and I got irritated. So I said, I don't mind that it needs the battery stuff and the cards and all that, but the story was it's the only racing chrome US spec P1 done at the factory, which is true. But what? originally it's a supernova painted car in Euro specs that they then repainted, turned it into an American car and shipped it to America. I go, well, it's not quite the story that I bought, but it is still the only racing chrome that MSO painted in now an American spec and P1. If yeah, and if it's done at McLaren. It's done it's, at McLaren. Boom, it's good to go. So maybe I was over picky. I think it's a great car. You know, looking at it next to the Senna. So the Senna is liquid silver. Yes. Racing chrome and liquid silver, seeing them side by side, racing chrome is spectacular. Oh, I agree. You know, liquid silver. This is a, 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 a McLaren. This, this is really McLaren painted something. these, but it's a Mercedes uh, F1 paint that they have to have a deal to do it with Mercedes to get the paint. I love the red rotors. Oh, I yeah. love the highlights. Yeah, carbon uh, in the side. Carbon in the sides. I think it's locked. Um, it's a spectacular car, and it's just had full service accumulators done on it, new tires. Uh, almost all these have a uh, control board for the batteries, especially the early cars that go bad. That's been done. It's been fully serviced, and you get the extended warranty Fine, with it. I'll plan on coming up to the house next week and taking a look at it in the garage. You never know. <laughs> this is the last Senna. So this was sold for charity. It brought two point six million dollars for Ayrton Senna's foundation for the rights to buy the last Senna. And then he had it painted liquid silver, which is a $97,000 option to paint it liquid silver. Both these paint jobs are crazy expensive. Yes, you can go out and buy a Cadillac Blackwing for the price of the paint job. Yes, <laughs> which I have. <laughs> oh, you, I, I'll, we'll have to talk about that at some point. No surprise you have one. So, I think this row of cars is spectacular. The original GT, yes. first generation of the new cars, yep. are spectacular cars. Three pedal cars, supercharged, different. These were made more to resemble a real GT40. Yes. The new car was built in a wind tunnel to and win on the 50th anniversary. Which they did. Which they did. It also, everybody's like, what kind of engine? Well, they put a... Uh, the EcoBoost. Uh, the EcoBoost, yes. and they made it so slippery it saved two pit stops over the Ferrari. And it's interesting because <laughs> I remember when there was that whole thing going on, you know, they're coming out with a V6, me being a traditionalist, saying, yeah. what are you doing? Boom. Well, remember yeah, when that. Jaguar and the uh, a 220, they were going to put a 12 in it, and they yes. ended up with a 6 with and twins? It still went 
because yeah, it's made point. to balance it yes. better and they were able to make the tail narrower by having the engine so short up yes. front made it much more aerodynamic here we have a ferrari so this is a one of one car so they made four uh f <coughs> four of these 488s for the earth series this is earth this is so, this is really interesting because so now i'm starting to see the colors and you have green, the carbon fiber green here. yes the pigskin interior is throughout it but you've got it through the steering wheel the everywhere so this is a tailor-made one-off car it has a plaque in here that is a earth edition car one yep. of one yep. with no miles delivery miles on it and next up we have america's countach yeah so we get <laughs> into really now wild. ultra rare muscle heavy a, with a stick i'm assuming and it this is a automatic on the column but it's one of ron pratt's cars six thousand original miles wow. This car has never been restored. So this is completely untouched. This is completely untouched. Holy friggin' Toledo. Yes. Obviously a midweek car because the paint looks pretty decent. <laughs> <laughs> Over here we have, as I always say, they made 17 LS6 convertibles. All 400 still exist. That's exactly right. <laughs> Probably the most cloned car other than a 435 horsepower Corvette. Or a 427 Cobra. Or, yeah, yeah. all those, at least we have the registry. We'll yes, get to the exactly. Cobra here in a minute. This is a Canadian car. There's only two Canadian cars. The great thing about a Canadian car is they have all the paperwork. This car has all wow. the paperwork. Yes. Jerry McNeish went through the entire car. As you can see, all the different, everything matches on this car. So our uh, resident, not resident, but Jerry is probably the best Chevelle Camaro expert, plus he also had other guys look at photos on Well, this. what's great about this, too, is for those that don't know, if they come here to you, you have the experts that can point them. Point Absolutely. We pulled out. two cars from here uh, that, you know, we made a lot of fuss about, but when we really looked at them, too many things didn't add up. Well, Two years ago, three years ago, when a bud wanted to buy a GT500, and he and I went looking, and then we went out with your guy whose name just flew out of my head. Uh, Jason Billups. Jason Billups. And what was fascinating was Billups pointed us to a car we weren't even considering, and when he went through all the originality aspects, it made total sense. And my bud ended up buying that car. You can't so. go wrong. And my thing is, these cars circulate back, and yes. these people, the worst thing is, is when a guy buys a car, either another auction or online, and it's not vetted, and then brings it to us, and we got to tell him what he really owns. Well, and this is part of the whole thing with the resto mod thing, is then you don't have to worry about that. Although we do have a resto mod expert. <laughs> of course you do. Because so. it's, a guy will buy a car, and he'll put on a laundry list of items it has on it. And then we'll come to them and go, well, that's not really an LS3. That's yes. not really yep, yep, Detroit yep. Speed suspension. And, but we also look at workmanship and how it's put together. So the yes. worst thing is have a thousand horsepower car with wrong brakes, wrong other oh, it's stuff. it's spooky. I've been in some restos that are You just... got to make sure, and we vet those. You know what's interesting about the LS6 is back in the day, uh, 1970, when these things came out, in the Chevelle, his car and driver did a comparison test with this, a Boss 302, like a Duster 340, and a 289 Cobra. And this was a second slower around Lime Rock than the 289 Cobra. Probably, because it's, it's a battleship. It does, you know, it's made to go fast straight, not But it, it handled relatively well and all that type of stuff, you know, because there you are in Lime Rock with a 289 Cobra, of it's course. It's much more nimble, yes. shorter straights other than the front one. But this thing hung with it to a reasonable degree, which I found impressive. So this, I was, I'll tell you the story. I was born in Pontiac, Michigan. My first car is a 66 Pontiac because my grandmother always drove Pontiacs. In fact, my skull, scar on my forehead is from her 59 Pontiac, fins in the back. She always drove Pontiacs, bought them from the General Motors store in Pontiac. And this is the last car to come off the assembly line in Pontiac, Michigan, where now M1 Raceway is. Yep. It has a video going down the line. It has the signs, but the neat part is every employee signed the car as it went down the line. 
Winston, I will let you read oh, what, Al, the I name. Saw, I, I saw you on the news with Corey McCloskey and your, your that's your mother's name or your grandmother's my name? My mother's name. Yes. Yeah. Now, it's Ella, not yes. my mother, but the handwriting's pretty close to my mother. So in Pontiac, carrying on the tradition, there was an Ellen Jackson working at oh, the plant the day they closed it. My dad worked for uh, General Motors. My mom worked for General Motors. My dad went to GM Tech. So I have a rich history. This car is a piece of automotive history. Gentleman bought it brand new, built a bedroom on his house. So he knew what he was getting. He knew what he was getting, put it inside in a climate controlled room and that's where it's lived till now. What's the mileage? It's whatever it was delivered. Still has this seat. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it's it, the fact that this has kind of the tie-in with your family yeah. and the name. Is, is this tickling your fancy at all? No. Because um, I'd I, never drive it. Yeah, of course. That's my rule. I don't and buy it's, trailer queens. It's, a, it's, <laughs> it's such a great rule to have. <laughs> if I don't drive it, I don't need it. <laughs> Down here. Okay. This has a great story too. So this Gullwing was delivered new to Havana, Cuba, uh, delivered to the police chief. He was quite a car guy and he used to race it. So we have vintage footage of this racing in Havana. Oh, outstanding. And just when Castro came to power, this car left the country. It didn't end up like a lot of the other ones that yes. were left behind, or I'm sorry, the Gullwing. Not yes. the Roadster. So the goal, so the this Gold is, Wing is the car that was in uh, Havana. Actually, you can see it right up there. Sorry. Got it. With the hard top on it, I wasn't really paying attention. I knew I started looking at the interior. I'm like, it's a tan with fitted luggage. All right, there we go. <laughs> it, it's not a trailer queen either. This thing's 59,000 miles. It's been driven. Uh, it's got an older restoration on it, but this but it is looks a great. It looks great. This is a great car to buy if you want to go. Actually, either one of these. Maybe that one's better for the Grand, because the Grand so the can get hot on. Yep. Yep. But these are awesome cars. You can buy a his and hers here at Barrett Jackson. This how roads, convenient, Mr. Jackson. How about that? We try to always think of the misses. You have two tops with the Roadster. But this having the vintage footage of it racing around oh, Havana, yeah, cool. it's a neat piece. Yeah, that's definitely. Now, going on to sort of how time and everything comes back around, the Cobra here has a great story. Thank you. I'm good, thank you. So this Cobra, was sold brand new. Now, it's been repainted, it's been upgraded. McCluskey did it years ago to SC yep. specs, painted it, it blue, white stripes. But originally this car was sold in Scottsdale, Arizona at Paradise Ford. I mean, people know Scottsdale had a Shelby Cobra GT40 dealer. So when you're going through the registries, you'll see Paradise Ford, yes. Paradise Ford. It sits where P.F. Chang's is Camelback Road and Scottsdale Road right next to the canal. It was a round building with windows that aimed out towards Camelback Mountain. It was a pretty cool dealership. So were you a kid like this on the... Well, my brother went there all the time, so I, I got to go there. There were two places that he went back in that area, Madison Chevrolet and Paradise Ford. So this was at Paradise Ford. The one next to it's a piece of Shelby history. So this was Lance Leventlow's car. Lance Leventlow, yeah. Yep. yep. This was his car. He started Scarab. Yes. When he shut down Scarab, he leased the building to Carroll. Now I don't know legally how he did this, but the employees went along. So uh, that's exactly right. That's how he got Remington. That's how he got Remington. Phil you, Remington. Who Phil was Remington, who, if you watch Ford versus Ferrari, invented the way to change the brakes. He you was know. his master problem solver. Literally, he was one of the and best And then he engineers. went on to Gurney yes. to build the Eagles. Yes. So master guy and his urn and his uh, apron are still at AAR on his workbench. You know, it's interesting too, if you see the guy's handwriting, he had the most beautiful handwriting. And it's just like, I was disappointed I never got to interview him just because, Rem, what's up with this? Yeah. I mean, it was very elegant, it's, it, anyhow. He was a genius. Yes, This car led to a lot of things. So the story goes, 
Remington bought this, not Remington. Oh, Reventlo. Reventlo yeah. bought this and ordered it with every option as a street car. Just so I think he could get enough money to Carol so he could write him a rent check back. <laughs> but he turned it into a race car. He raced it. Was, so, he, was he decent on the track? You know, I don't know what his record was, but you know what he is credited for and what Remington loved is he brought American open wheel racing yes. and building those cars in America to America, which is what he loved going out and building the F1 cars with the and titanium it, exhaust and, and all because, of that on the Gurney Eagles. And then if memory serves me correctly, they had an off the engine, which yeah. was kind of their downfall. It wasn't, it wasn't as fast as what the Europeans had but his scarabs were just beautiful things. They were. So this car has a lot of great history that's, to it. That's very so cool. So we sell history, we love the history. Now, let me show you, I promised you to show you a couple of over the top resto mods. Do we have resto mods? One of seven of these legal in the US. <laughs> of course. They're brought in under the Bill Gates law. You can't drive it over 2,500 miles a year because they haven't been DOT. Show and display thing. Show and display. Yep. Hasn't been DOT'd and EPA'd. Yep. I don't think they rammed a bunch of them into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you think? <laughs> yeah. Rest, resto mod row here. Rusty Wallace's personal uh, resto yes. mod that he built. This Lincoln I love. This oh. was in the cup last year. So you got a coyote powered. So the cup, what is the cup? The cup is, we have 50 of the world's best hot rods on Saturday, the opening day, competing for cash. It. Yeah. And uh, it's the only one where you actually win a sum of cash. So the top five for this year are in there. So this one is blue suede shoes. This was about a $750,000 build. Holy the gentleman that know. built it took it on multiple tours. Um, road rallies across country, drove Good it thousands of miles. Morrison chassis on this thing? Yep, Art Morrison sense. chassis. Yeah. But the way they did the engine, so it looks like it's a nail head, but it's an LS. Yes. You know, the attention to detail, you gotta look at the way they did the seats in it, the uh, baseball. It's this side. You got it? No. Yeah. Here's the one I really want to show you. I mean, these are over the top, over the top Pantera, Ring Brothers Pantera, the second time. I, uh, Ring Brothers I'm not familiar with. Ring Brothers build some of the most fantastic hot rods. They, they build Mustangs like they will take a Mustang, cut it in half and widen the car. Of course. Usually they unveil them at, the, uh, at SEMA. That car is so over the top. Roadster Shop built special suspension for the whole car. This is Maybelline. Now, Maybelline has a very special engine. They built three of these motors. Yeah, yeah, Holy Toledo. Yes. And it's the only one that is supercharged. So this is not a European motor made to look. This is a handmade American V12 supercharged. And it sounds like a Ferrari. It zings really quick. I wish you had the keys. <laughs> no, Kindig's around here somewhere. I'll have them started up. Uh, but yeah, it sounds really cool. Uh, that's, that's Tied to a uh, T6 uh, speed Tremec transmission. Do, uh, do you have dyno sheets on it or anything? Do we know horsepower figures? He told us it's like 600 and some, but I think that's without really pumping the boost to yeah. it. Yeah, that's But fabulous. the workmanship on is, this car, yeah, and it still has the electric top and the windows that work and all you know, of I'm that, but they the door upgraded and everything. All that type of stuff. Oh yeah, they the just yeah, went is, over the top. Yeah, and look at the interior. You're the only one to own a Maybelline. So, you know, back in the old days, you could commission somebody to build you a custom made chassis. Now. So here's a question. You consider this more a custom than a resto mod? Yes, because they, change you know resto mod you try to make it look sort of stock mm -hmm. and you put contemporary drivetrain under it this is a you took a stock body they cut the nose stretched it put a whole new power plant not just a transplant made a power plant for the vehicle it yeah. is one of these hybrids totally custom now, i got other customs down because here because it's interesting because Originally, resto mods were called customs, and then as the whole thing evolved, yeah, we tried to correct people. Yeah. Yes, because a resto mod is like this: 
you know, it still has the door handles. It still yes. looks pretty stock. That looks like a 57 Bel Air. Yep, yep, but you know, it's got an LT4 underneath it, 650 horsepower. You know, look at the workmanship. It's got rack and pinion steering, a whole new chassis yep. Yep. underneath it. This is a resto mod. Patrick built this before he passed away. And Patrick was here in Arizona and he specialized in Tri-5 Chevys. Then his dad built a resto mod. Then they got into a competition, all right. But he had the attention to detail to build 100-point Tri-5 Chevys, and they rocked the house here. His cars would bring 300-some thousand dollars, but they were spectacular. Then he built resto mods and built some of the best ones. But if you want to see how it sort of evolves, Come a long way from the safari, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, a couple <laughs> years. And uh, now, now we're off the polo field, so now we're not down in the dirt. It was a long time getting out of the dirt. Where is El Chapo? Who are you know looking we, for? Oh, the El Chapo, the pickup truck. Oh, it's that's the ne next row over. This is David Spade's resto mod here. Oh, or no, the next row. That's the. Uh, yeah, this this resto mod row here. So these are all resto mods. Yep. Those yep. are all resto mods. This is Spade's resto mod here. I did a piece with him. He is absolutely hilarious out of the box. Did you hear? Did you see any of it? On. On. Uh, we push it out. It's uh, on Instagram, Facebook. It's on our YouTube channel. He did a 50th thank you for us. And uh, I'll have to take a look. Uh, so yeah. I don't want to give it all away, yeah, but fine. he did a seven minute piece on the Ellen show touring his mom through Barrett Jackson. Oh, outstanding. And we took clips of that and, and interjected it with him happy, well, sh wishing us a happy 50th. But then I did a separate piece with him in the garage on his car. Nice. It, both of them are hilarious. Nice. He is so funny. This is uh, El Diablo. So. When you talk about where's the difference between a resto mod yes. and a custom, when you first look at this, you would think it's a stock truck that they, you know, painted a few things silver. But when you really start looking at it, they pop the fenders out two inches to make it laser straight down the sides. There's no chrome around the windshield any longer. They flushed everything. They brought the bumpers. Look at the look at the fit and finish. Yes. There isn't one inch on this truck that hasn't been massaged, but did it in a way that it sort of looks stock. But it's not. It's not. This one, good guys truck of the year. This was runner up at the grade eight. It is a very trick truck. So it sort of crosses that line between a full on custom, but it sort of looks like a resto mod. So in many ways, this is modern custom coach. It you is. Go, going to, to European. I, 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 <laughs> I know the guy that built that. He's built on a truck from here. Uh, it's a killer truck. It is. He spent a couple dollars on it building this. <laughs> beautiful. So Thank that's you. sort of our resto mods, customs. Then you get into one of our fortes. So in Houston, we sold the Risky Business Porsche for $1.98 million. Yeah, 928. Yeah, 928. Yes. Set a new world record for a 928 Quite Porsche. <laughs> Here we have part of, so we have three vehicles from Fast and Furious. This was Burt Reynolds' personal Smokey and the Bat. There were two promo cars used. One we sold when Burt got out of it here on the block for 550000 This one he kept all those years until he had financial troubles and he had to sell yeah, everything. Yeah. That's the first time that this ever was sold. Still says Bandit on the door. This was Burt's personal Smokey and the Bandit car. This is a piece of history here. So this is Alan Shepard's Corvette oh, yep. from 1968. The astronauts could lease a Corvette of any options for $1. He chose an L89 Corvette, four speed. Good choice, yes. aluminum headed 435 horsepower Looks Corvette. Blew it up immediately. It has a crate replacement engine of the era put back in it. He was known for drag racing everybody and 
kind of sounds like someone else I know that runs uh, an auction business. And so. tough on equipment, too. Yes. I had a 68 Corvette, blew it up numerous times. My brother used to tell me, you are brutal on equipment. That's what they're for. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, and they work after we fixed it. Yep. This is all original. Sitting next to it, an original 68 L88. White, red interior, yep. one of 68 built. So we sell a little bit of everything, numbers, matching cars, customs, resto mods, supercars, and then one of the hottest segments of the markets, trucks, resto modded. When did you see that coming? About three, four years ago, we started selling them and they just started climbing. You know, it sort of started with the 50, five, six, sevens and bringing them up. Then the Broncos came along and then the Blazers. We sold that Blazer and, uh, Palm Beach for 275000 like four years ago. That's when we saw it. And so are you essentially saying, oh, that might be a trend, let's dip our toe in the water and see what happens? Yeah, you, you start putting more of them in and seeing how people respond to it. Steve says it's like stock of the shelves on a supermarket, you know? People's tastes change. You got, everybody doesn't eat steaks anymore, so we need some vegetarian items yeah, over here. Yeah. We need some fish. We're gonna need a little of this. And that's what we have here. It's an eclectic mix. It's 1,850 cars. This is the best of the best, but we start with entry-level cars on Monday. Small fish become large fish. Just get in the hobby, as we say. Just buy a car, buy the best car you can. Yes. Ask us questions. We'll help guide you. That's what, that's what it's about at a live auction. Well, and this is what's marvelous about you, because in a way, you have created your own universe. Yeah. Where, because it's, you have so many aberrations in the market. Yes. That it's just you and many, I don't know of any other auction company I can say of that about, and also the way you bring in new money. Yes. Is, yeah, is extraordinary. About 1,800 first-time bidders already registered for this auction. Out of how many? Well, we were at 5,000 last night. I think we're going to break the 2022 record was 5,400, and I'll bet we end up at about 6,000. We had to reprint bidder paddles yesterday, so we're afraid <laughs> we're going to run out. Outstanding. And so, uh, in terms of lines of credit, how far over are you over a billion? We, are we were a billion, billion four, almost billion five last night. I'll bet we end up close to two billion when we're done. So basically, this is uh, the Dominican Republic of Jackson. Yes. Yeah. We like a good ratio. We like, you know, usually ten bidders for every car, and we like to have about the same ratio when it comes to dollars well, of the total offering. As my team has heard me say many times, in my opinion, you're the best mind in the business because you do so many things that no one else does. Yeah, no, it's uh, my ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me, he has it. So. Bad. <laughs> but it keeps my mind working, and uh, I just don't sit around and say, yeah, let's do the same thing as last year. I get bored quick. So my wife says I'd be bored in an avalanche. <laughs> <laughs> so during the week, do you ever start burning out? No. Uh, I, I burn out more just as we come in because it's so much to get the catalog done. It's so much just getting everything. And then you get the auction and then the adrenal just starts yes. pumping and your adrenal gland by the end of this is like a dried up raisin, that thing. <laughs> I squeeze every ounce out of it. Well, you do it very well. No, oh, I love what I do. You know, because I was talking with a team last night and so ace videographer Lee, who's relatively buff, we were, he went back to the house last night on the chaise, bang, he's out. And I'm thinking, holy oh, you, there's freaking Craig going pedal to the metal. Yeah, what's up with that? So, it's the A part of the AHD <laughs> that keeps you running. <laughs> cool, bud. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you, man. Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah. I love this stuff. Stop by, see the man cave. I've upgraded it and keep adding more toys. <laughs> yeah, looking, looking forward to it. I'll give you guys a jingle. Yeah, you got to see the show. new little red I built. Can we go out for a drive? Yeah. This one's a driver. All right, we're gonna have oh, some they more all fun, are drivers, yes. but this one. Yeah. So I did one the way the car ended life with all the prototype parts because yes. I didn't have yep. anything to do. I think I told you I was building it, so yes, it's you done. Did. Yes.
Yes. I do, I'm like, what do I do with all these one-off emblems? What do I do with all these prototype parts that now I've tied back to the paperwork and the drawings yes. and the documentary? Yep. So I built the car the way it ended life. Done. I'll give you a jingle. All right. We'll take Later, it out man. and smoke the tires. Thanks for joining us, <laughs> and we'll see you guys on the road. Yeah.